Hi, everyone. <laughs> Uh, I think we should start as if we've never done this before because we have, I think, six or eight podcast episodes from 2017. Yeah. <laughs> now we're 2020, and um, it's not really a serial podcast like where every episode relates to the last. So let's no. introduce ourselves. All right, let's do it. Me first? Yeah. <laughs> I am Chris. <laughs> Chris Fiber Arts, as uh, Micah says. <laughs> yeah, Tannis Fiber Arts. Our children, no, our business is called Tannis Fiber Arts. I'm Tannis, this is Chris. We're married, and um, at a certain age, each of our children has thought that my name was Tannis Fiber Arts, so that was our last name, so that's cute. Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> uh, they're getting older. They know They know that's not true now. Some but, of them. <clears throat> we, uh, we have three kids, two boys and a girl, ages almost seven. Almost five and just turned two. And I think uh, Willow's being two coincides with probably the last podcast, right? Like, Yeah, the last podcast we did was announcing that we were pregnant with Willow. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the thing about... Not unrelated. Right, exactly. The thing about um, us and how we run our business, where it's just us running the business and obviously having parenting our family, running our family... Um, we do as much as we can when we can. We loved doing the podcast when we had two children um, who were both in daycare and we had time to do it. It was great. And then when I became pregnant with Willow and I was quite sick at the beginning, like everybody, because I was pregnant. And then we had a newborn and then like things just got crazy. We, something had to give. We couldn't do, every, you know, we had, basically we just needed to keep the business afloat. We needed yeah. to stay alive. Yeah. And uh, anything extracurricular was just more than we could manage. And I'm a big advocate of that, doing as much as you can and then not doing the things that you can't. Yeah. On right? the one hand, it was a shame. There was always times where I, I felt like uh, it would be nice to do another episode. Well, you love, it. Chris loves the podcast. I so I do all the yeah. Instagram, I do the blogging, I do the customer. Like, Chris, really, his role in Tannis Fiber Arts is a very important one. He dyes all of the yarn. But then, as, other than that, you don't have as much interaction with people. No, I, I mean, that's I right. don't either yeah. because we work from home. I have only interact with Chris. But on Instagram or Facebook or in the Ravelry group, all that stuff, we I I do all that. So I feel like I'm a bit more in contact with yeah. people. And this is your. I'm kept in the uh, the studio, as you can see. I'm wearing the apron for it, and just <laughs> yeah. was called in just for this. Yeah. <laughs> um. So Chris, Chris missed it. We both missed it. It's just that. You, know, you can't do everything, and that's okay. You do what you can. Yeah. So rather than pretending like we're um, jumping off where we left off. Or, um, or going to be able to keep a regular schedule yeah. going forward. No, no guarantees. <laughs> we're going to do what we can. But we just wanted to... Um, so our baby Willow just turned two. She's at daycare a couple days a week now, and so we perhaps have... You didn't, you didn't like the hat? Uh, it's getting a little hot. <laughs> um. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll, we'll be able to fit this in a little bit more often now. And so, I can't fill you in on everything that I've knit and everything that we've done in the past two and a half years. Not in a short time span. No. So, let's just talk about uh, the sweater I'm wearing. It's beautiful, by the way. Thank you. One this way. is, um, well, this is what we can talk about. It's now the end of February. At the beginning of October of 2019, we did our first knitting show in seven years yeah. because we used to do two shows a year one in the spring one in the fall the toronto uh knitters guild no the toronto knitters frolic yeah. and then the kw the kitchener waterloo knitters guild show and um we love doing those they were great but then the toronto show is in the spring typically the end of april i think and then our first child was born at the beginning of april and so that first year we weren't able to go and then I had, yeah, so, you know, then I had another pregnancy and then another baby. And then seven years later, we finally felt like we were in a place that we could do another show. And so we went out to Vancouver. And for the first time ever, we did the Vancouver, uh, Knit City Vancouver. And it was, it was amazing, It was right? great. It, it was, was really good, great. Yeah, good, it was really daunting. Days. We sort of, I got, um, well, actually... The reason that we did it, do you know what the impetus was for me being like, let's do this? Do you remember? I know you wanted to meet your Vancouver friends. Yeah, that's for so sure. I definitely wanted to meet the Vancouver <laughs> friends. But the reason I was so um, gung-ho about meeting the Vancouver friends is because I had this little period last 
last winter where I went away for the first time for a long weekend with two of my best knitting friends, Julie Crawford of Knitted Bliss yeah. and Shireen from The Blue Brick. We went away for a long weekend, a girls getaway, and it was amazing. It was so rejuvenating and invigorating and inspiring and I was just it was just so nice to be with knitters. And then very shortly after that, Hohi Locatelli was in Montreal. And when she was here, I spent the day with her. I yeah. saw her. Uh, Julie Asselet was with us for the day. A bunch of other great knitters. Um, we went to an event at Espace Tricot that evening. And I was just like on such a knitting high. And I was like interacting with knitters and seeing, getting to speak to them in, in real life instead of everything just being always online was just like, so exciting and really infectious and so then I said I think we should do a show I think we're ready to jump back in I need to see people in person again let's do let's let's go big let's let's fly all the way across the country and do a show in Vancouver and yeah. so I which is the, the only way we can do anything is you just jump on board sign like, up do it. and then do not back out <laughs> right well you can't so then I because I said I was going to do it I had even you know, I emailed the show coordinators and we got a booth and everything was all set to go. And then, I mean, I, I contemplate, I talked to Chris about, we shouldn't do this. We, I should back out. Oh, several times. Several yeah, times. Yeah. Not really Things just ever. get busy, right? In the plans. And we've never done it before. So it's, I'm very intimidated by logistics. I'm not right. a logistics planning person. You did great. Thank we didn't, you. uh, we didn't knock it out of the park with, um, physical booth planning. Setup. I know what you were going to, I thought you were going to say signage. Well, that counts as part of the physical booth. Is there a sign right up there? Uh, yeah. You want me to get yeah, it down? Yeah, get it. This is the sign we brought to Vancouver. Get ready, guys. Get ready to be blown get away. Get ready to be overwhelmed. Look at that. It comes Ooh. right out at you. It is like grade four science for caliber. The coloring is beautiful. Thank I will you. say that. I colored Stayed it in the myself. lines very well, but it is literally paper on dollar store. Yeah. So I'm going to try to, so we're also, we're going to be at Knit City Vancouver. They're doing, Montreal, they're doing their first uh, Knit City Montreal this, like next month, in a month. Yeah. And we're going to be there, and no guarantees that we have a better sign. <laughs> I intend to <laughs> do something, but I, I have not yet organized an, a new sign system. So we, um, do you know what my problem is? It's storage, because we don't have a shop. Stella makes an appearance. Stella, come here. We don't have a shop. We work from home. Storage and space is always an issue. Um, obviously, I mean, I just need to come up with a sign that I can just hang on the wall in the office here that we can just have right. available, like, around. It's not that big of a deal. I'll do it. This is Stella, if you guys don't know her. This is our dog, Stella. She's so, 13. 13-year-old Whippet. Can you believe it? I bet some people remember when we got her. Yeah. Um, so we did Vancouver show. It was really a great experience. It was so much fun. It, um, yeah. And like I say, the, the logistics of it were daunting because we had to ship everything there. We had to use a logistics provider to get stuff to the booth. Because ship it, you're like, oh, cool, yeah, you just ship it out to Vancouver. To where in Vancouver? Like, to what address? Like, you need to have somebody to accept. Chris, you just put her on the tripod and knock the whole thing over. Oops. Do you know how long it took me to set this up? Uh, and I don't know how to edit. So that's it. Um, yeah, we had to ship to a logistics provider. We had to coordinate um, people to help us in the booth because we couldn't just, and we had to coordinate care for our children at home. And it was kind of a, yeah, it was a big thing. It was, um, the other thing about when we do shows, again, because we work from home, we don't have a shop. We already, like we work full time at full capacity to, to do our regular day-to-day -day work. Yeah. So then if we're doing a show, it's not like we have a, somebody else who we're like, okay, you're on top of show prep. Chris, you do the orders. Hey, you work for the pop-up shop. It's like it's it's just on top of everything else that you always do. You just have to like pepper in extra batches yeah. to do the show stuff. So it's a lot. That's why. You can't even really split it into show dying days and dealing with website days. It's to stay on top of everything. It's just got to be incorporated as... Yeah. You know, one thing. Um, but we got it done. Yeah. And yeah. now we're gearing up to do Knit City Montreal next month. And I think it'll be... I'm excited. I was thinking, like, oh, it's going to be so much easier because we don't have to go across the country. But I actually think it's going to be harder. In terms of dealing with the kids or with the... Well, in terms what? of... Because we're going to have kids at home. Because we have to... 
when we shipped everything there, since we used this logistics company, that it was very expensive. But when we showed up to set up, all of our stuff that we had shipped was just it's waiting right for us in the booth. The yeah. Whereas now we have to put everything in our minivan, maybe make two trips, deal with traffic, unload every single... Like, there's so much schlepping involved. Yeah. Right? And then deal, and then also, at the end of the day, when we were finished unloading all of our... Or, and packing all of our stuff, the company came by and put everything back on the... All the empty boxes on a pallet and took it away. That was a real bonus. Now we're going to have to do... You know, we have... There's so much that we're going to have to do um, ourselves. That yeah. It's just more work, but that's uh, just different. It's going to be different. Right. It'll be fun, though. We're looking forward to it. I still feel strongly, though, can't not do it. Like, Montreal... First, oh, yeah, First yeah. one, you know, there. we got to be We're there. excited to be there. Yeah. Um, so they're kind of one of the reasons why I started talking because about the Knit City Vancouver is because one of the great things about doing a show like that for us, it was the kick in the pants to like do a deadline, to do a new color, to do a new pattern. Like when we're, everything we do is self-motivated, really. We have to make our own um, deadlines. Like, you know, because we don't really work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does everybody know what I mean? Yeah. Like... Instead of somebody, you know, if you're working for a magazine, they give you a deadline. Well, we don't, we don't, I don't really do that. It's self, I self-publish patterns. We make our own schedule for when we do updates and, and when we add new colors when we want to. We're really fly by the seat of our pants. Yeah, and a little bit of structure really helps to, yeah. to know you're working towards something and to have a time yes. frame for it. Otherwise, you can you can float a little bit, especially with as busy as life gets. So yeah, totally. It's great to have dates in the not too distant future. So with Knit City Vancouver, I decided that it would be really fun to use the deadline of the show as um, motivation for me to design a new pattern that I had an idea for that I had wanted to do and I was like, perfect, and I'll do it for the show. And then also in conjunction with that pattern, we did it in a new colorway. And so the whole lot of it, the colorway and the pattern are both called Metropolis and we did them it's a turtleneck. How do you show it? I'm going to try to turtleneck it so that it shows more. Can you help, help me hold it up? up? Yeah. Sure. You hold it like that. So it's a knit and chunky yarn, super cozy, raglan, generous ribbing, big, awesome turtleneck. I, I hope it's it. showing up in the, the amount of variation that you get in the color. It reads as an overall gray, like a soft gray, but there's a ton going on yeah. in it. Well, I can put some other pictures of it, maybe. The, um, yeah, it's our favorite type of speckle to dye to do, where from a distance, you're like, oh, that's a nice gray sweater, and from up close, or when you're knitting it specifically, um, you're like, every stitch is a different color. There's yeah. so much going on, yeah. but it's also still super wearable. So this was, Metropolis, I feel, really dictated our, our like, the year since October, because we Absolutely. worked on it leading up to the show, launched it at the show, and then... I knitted in this chunky, beautiful, speckled Metropolis colorway, but then I wasn't over it, and I knit it, um, again, the sweater that I'm wearing right now is this exact same pattern, but with super simple mods to make it look completely different. I didn't do the turtleneck, I just did one inch of ribbing instead. I made no other changes to the neckline other than to just not turtleneck. Um, the pattern, the turtleneck chunky pattern is written with just I just did you know like extra long ribbing so instead right. of doing an inch and a half or two inches of ribbing I did I think like four or five maybe inches and then same on the body there's like seven or eight inches of ribbing and so then for this version I just did two I just did less ribbing more stocking it and then to achieve a chunky gauge I held three strands of fingering weight and one strand of mohair together I used the exact same size needles as the pattern calls for I just combined yarns to get the gauge mm -hmm. and then I did it using all kinds of leftover yarns and fun pretty colors and it was this has been this was my most kind of like exciting project of the year I think yeah it was really fun and then I knitted again for my sister-in-law in a different color oh, palette because right. a chunky sweater is actually pretty fast and I uh, because I'm wearing it with positive ease I have about like eight inches maybe of of um extra it's not tight and it's not hot because even though it's chunky um, you would worry you would overheat. I, I can, yeah. I wear it all the time. Yeah. Like it's not a, you know, we live in Montreal, it's very cold, but it's still totally wearable. And I, I think that that's really fun. Um, and that leads me to my current work in progress. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. So this is what I'm currently working on. It's kind of inspired, very much inspired by this sweater. I'm working on, I was calling it sort of like Metropolis's little sister pattern because this is chunky. 
And um, though I think it's super fun to stash bust and to hold three strands of fingering and one strand of mohair together, as soon as I post a picture of it, everybody's like, oh, we need a kit for that. It's just not possible. It's there's, wildly there's complicated like, to do that. Well, it's just I used I used so many little odds and ends of yeah. yarn, just what I had available, like, you know, a couple yards of this, more yards of that. Like, it's just, and then probably, I don't know how many, probably <clears> like 30, 40 different types of yarn, colors and different bases. Some of them aren't even, are on hand dyed. It's just not really kittable. And so, and then also the chunky gauge requires a lot of yarn. Yeah. Which is just less... Um, budget friendly I guess yeah so I wanted to do one that was a slightly thinner gauge but still had all the excitement and, and dynamism of the original so I have it in this pretty bag this bag was made by the company's called the salty dog made in the Maritimes and it's um, actually a friend of mine who lives in Nova Scotia who makes these uh, it's sandy yep I love that bag um, yeah and I just love the squirrels I love the colorway so it's fun um, I don't think she has, uh, you can't buy her stuff online. She sells at a local shop there. In, in so Nova come Scotia. visit. So this is, uh, I don't have a name for it yet, um, but it's worsted weight instead of chunky. So you're only holding two strands of fingering weight together or one strand of worsted weight. I'm going to knit a sample in both. And it's this, a very similar shape in that it's just like your casual kind of sweatshirt. Look at how smooth that gradient is. <laughs> and then I use one of our fade kits. So, so many hand dyers make five skein fade sets. And so they're really accessible. It's really easy to reproduce this look with a fade set. Yeah. Instead of being like, cool, you can only knit this if you have a huge stash of leftover sock yarn. So I feel like it's a bit more accessible. That's yeah. What I like about it. And this one we worked at with, really with the idea of them being used in conjunction. It's not like a collection of separate things. It's, we really worked them together coming up with the colorway to be, oh the fade set the yeah. fade set to be something yeah, yeah. that flowed well and and then also just talking about last year i guess so this set is the set that we the colors that i'm using is the fade that we included um as an option for our 2019 holiday gift bundle and what i think is kind of fun about that is that i like when a product or a colorway or a pattern something is released just because it's a month or more old doesn't mean that it's stale. I wasn't willing to let it go yet. We really <laughs> you know? liked it. There's like, Christmas yeah. and we did we dyed it so much for in preparation for Christmas. Yeah. That it kind of took a little breather and then when we were discussing new colorways and potential things for uh, the upcoming Montreal show and just, you know, going yeah. forward, we decided to shine the spotlight on it a little bit more. Yeah, I just feel like there's so much in the world that um it's all about consumerism and like always something new and and though we do do new colorways and we're you know I'm always working on new patterns and stuff I, I like to refresh not new things sometimes as well you know what I mean yeah it's nice for us too like because you, you colorways can get buried in the in the back of the catalog and it's yeah. you know it's nice to Go so this one and... isn't that old. I mean, it's literally, we launched it in like November of 2019. Right. So it's Absolutely. only a couple months. Yeah. However, I just, um, instead of coming up with some with a brand new fade and being like, limited time only, you got to get this. I know a lot of people even have this in their stash if they got it for in the holiday gift bundle. So Yeah, if it's you haven't just, found uh, the motivation for it in terms of a project, yeah. maybe this will help. Yeah. <laughs> and so the other thing that's kind of fun about this, it's hard to see it as a, as a work in progress. I'm almost done. The second sleeve just needs that, just a couple more inches. Um is that I've, I've made it, it's totally reversible. So I actually intend to wear it with the stocking, with the reverse stockinette side, the pearl side out. I love marled gradient yarns on the pearl side. And so that's the side that I'm gonna wear out. Um, however, I've designed it to be knit with, this, with the knit side out, because yeah. I think it would be super annoying for me to have to, it's knit in the round and to, to purl every round rather than, so I'm just knitting it with the knit side out and then turning it inside out. Yeah. And I've made sure that there's short rows that are, that I'm using German short rows that look good on both sides. I'm using the way the, that you pick up the stitches in the underarms makes it look good on both you sides. You had mentioned it's, maybe doing one for Rowan as well that yes. he would not reverse. Yes. Right. Like a so I hope to for the pattern to have one knit. For, I was actually thinking of knitting it 
I think I'm going to knit Rowan's in our Leo colorway, which is one of the Part colors. Of that fade. Yeah, it's the middle color in the fade that I'm using. And I just really, really love it. Um, and I think it would be a really pretty. So I need to knit stuff. My our oldest, our almost seven year old, you open up his his sweater drawer. There's I think he has it's one. All migrated over to my Yeah, guess. he's lot <laughs> he's outgrown all of his hand knits and now my our almost five year old has uh, like a dozen sweaters in his. Which he loves. He's wearing a yeah, crazy he heart them. at uh, daycare today. But uh, yeah, so my uh, our big guy. The only sweater that he has that fits and he's wearing it today is my his Atari, is his Atari the pattern. Yeah. I just released a pattern last week, which we can talk about now that we're done talking about this. So this yeah. is exciting. This is knit from a fade. I, I'm excited for the possibilities of this. I feel like it's... Uh, oh, and then I did... I'm going to include a few options in the pattern too for this one that I'm knitting for myself. I'm doing all the hems in I-cord. I don't know if you can sort of see. There's a little I-cord hem there, so I'm not doing any ribbing. And I'm going to have to try it on again and see if I can pull that off for the neckline. It'll be a pretty, like, open neck, but maybe maybe I like that. Yeah. Um, and then for Rowan's, I would do all ribbing. Ribbing on the yeah. neck and ribbing around the cuffs just for a more, like, sportier look. Um, so there you go. Not that he'd give you any trouble with an open neck. You'd be fine with it? You'd be fine with it. <laughs> I just think it's cute to have options. Um, can I jump in super quick with my Atari stuff? Sure. So I'm the last well, in our family. Well, should I show what an Atari looks like? Oh, of course, yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to show mine. Well, and I'll show Willow's because I haven't both. I'll hold, hold up Willow's. Willow's. So just to show, this is the Atari pattern that I just released so last week. I'm crazy about it. I'm a huge fan, too. I really, really love it. And um, again, so it, it's that like sweatshirt style fit. It's the same way this fits. The Atari fits is the way my new pattern that I'm working on is going to fit. I just really am into the... It's really easy shape to wear. Like your mom did one for Micah. Yeah. They're all um, yeah. They all fit great. They look. Rowan yeah. won't take his off. Yes. He loves it. He's wearing it wearing again it today. Since, yeah. Um, and you can use any three colors in the world. Right. This is what I really love about it. All the the versions on Ravelry that the test knitters made, and then the trying to come up with. We have kits available for the Atari sweater pattern on our website, and. I wanted to come up with kit six color way options for people to choose from. And it was really hard to narrow it down. Because yeah. if you look, you can do anything. So I tended to stay with like a lighter color on top, a darker color on the bottom, and then a pop of color in the middle. Right. I've seen it in reverse. People you can do the reverse. In reverse. You can do it like well. tone on tone. Anyways, there's so many options. Um, so what are you going to do for yours? So, so everybody in my, our family has one except for Chris because he always... Chris isn't exactly the fastest knitter in the I'm world. I'm not. I love knitting, uh, and it just gets bumped down the list sometimes where I'll um, put something on the needles, and a couple months later, there they are. <laughs> yeah. He's more of a regular knitter, I would say. Well, a regular. You know, I don't know. Like, that's fine. You don't yeah. have to be. I'm an obsessive knitter. Knitting is right. so ingrained in my daily life and part of my lifestyle. Like that. If I get a hat and sweater done in a year, that's good for me. It's, and that's totally yeah, fine because yeah, he does other things too. Things he has other that. hobbies. Yeah. He does other stuff, and I, I don't. I only knit. That's why people are often like, "How do you knit so much?" I'm like, "It's a full time thing." It's all I do. Yeah. Yeah. So I dyed up some colors for mine. This is uh, retro that I wanted to do for the top. It's a fun way for me to use a speckle, which I don't know if I've ever knit with, not for myself. I don't know. Yeah. So this one's got. Uh, little Not pops for yourself, of... no. You've knit a hat and crystal for yeah. that. This is a good way. It reads as like a greeny gray, but it's got uh, purples, pinks, oranges. Yeah, it's a really fun speckle. All kinds of nice stuff going on in it, which I'm excited for. So that's going to be my yoke. And then I did something. Now, i got to say, Tennis gets upset. Not upset, but upset. she she's questions why I make something super close to colorways we have to use for my own stuff. So this is reading as, what would you say? Gold. Between saffron and gold, or? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of just a more. It is barely off our gold color. Yeah, way. it's like a, this is gold in DK in a different way, but I mean, well, I guess gold is a bit brighter. You, you made it a little bit muter. As the dyer, I get to indulge. Muter? To... Is muter, muted <laughs> More muted, yeah. More muted. And then yeah, you I can do whatever you want, but pretty, it's just. A pretty drab green for the base of it, which is. Maybe not everyone's cup of tea, but I love it and I'm super excited. <laughs> People will love it. It's really nice. Chris is being Janice apprehensive asked me about it. Three times if those were the colors I was choosing. I wasn't. It's it's not in my 
um, wheelhouse right. of colors that yeah. I would choose. However, and I do like them. I do like this. Chris was making fun of me because I was saying how I don't, uh, I'm like, you sure about those colors? I'm not sold on those colors. And then he pointed out that, like, every time I brought it up, I was wearing, I have a pair of pants that's Oh, and this a shirt, color. yeah. That I love. So <laughs> he's like, I don't believe you. Every time I would say, oh, I don't know about that color, he'd be like, you're wearing it every day. Um, so it's going to be great, and I don't know why, I, but I think that you were a little slow to cast on because I was dubious. But then at the same time, I feel like it's important that we have different color senses a little bit. Like, right. you've got to explore your own. It took me, like, two weeks to get around to doing this swatch for it, right? Yeah. Which is the green, which is, it's funny because it reads to me as a completely flat green, but if you see... You know, there's still some little variegation stripes yeah, in there's it. Yeah, there's so, always some, a little bit of action. Yeah. It's going to be nice. Which is, I mean, that's the best thing about knitting. See how it looks with your complexion. Maybe that's what I'm, you know, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be great. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, so once you get started, you're typically pretty good. Like, at, you just need to cast yeah. on and get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it is apprehensive, too, because I'm um, so mean to you when you're knitting <laughs> and asking me questions. <laughs> No, it's for my own good. I tend to, instead of look something up, go to a pattern, uh, watch a short video on how to do a certain stitch or use a technique. Tannis is right there knitting, and she's like an encyclopedia of it, so I'm always interrupting what she's knitting to be like, hey, hey, what do I do here? Or trying to hand stuff off for the tricky Well, because it's like it's the end of the day, we've worked all day, we've made it through the after school and supper and put the kids to bed, and yeah. then I just like, I sit down with my knitting on the sofa, and Chris is like, um, excuse me, how do you do a short row? And I'm like, uh, look up a video, do what everybody else does, go yeah. on YouTube. I don't want to talk to you right now. <laughs> but I, I, I will. You do. I do, I do. Yeah. So Chris is working on his Atari, and hopefully next time we do a podcast. There'll be something progress. to show. Yeah. Show us what you, you have. Did you bring your hat? Uh, yes. You mean the one from Vancouver? Yeah. So Tennis said before we, right was, as we were leaving the door for the airport, was like, you should bring something to knit because we won't have the kids around and we can both knit at the same time, which is not a reality yeah. in day-to-day -day life. So I did. I cast on, I don't even remember what color it was, maybe cloak, I Yeah, guess. cloak, which so. is the same color as the body of my sweater, which is, by the way, so people call it different things. What do you call it? What? Cloak. What, what family, what color is it to you to me yeah it reads as a purpley blue but yeah. i would definitely call it a blue you would yeah so i feel like i would i was maybe thinking of it as more of a purple but everybody references it as blue and so so there's luckily they're forgiving blue. i promised one of the boys this hat and that's as far as i got probably the plane ride yeah. home and i haven't taken it out of this bag since yeah which is uh but i'm not going to beat myself up about it i'm just going to finish it yeah I love the cloak color though. It's really, it's probably my current favorite color. Um, so that's, those are your whips, your works in progress. So yeah. If you want to see, well, oh, and I already showed my sweater. So I'm actually a pretty, I think the other reason people think I'm a super fast knitter, I'm a, I'm really quite a monogamous knitter in that I start and finish things. That's right. I don't really have, I don't have, I, I currently have two projects on the go. I have that sweater and then this pair of socks. But when you factor in the needles, I steal for things that I don't finish. Yeah, <laughs> you don't have much choice. You got to finish it. That's right. You have. So hold up the sock for us, please. So this sock, I've got one knit, and I'm working on the second one. And it's just, it's a. Um, this is my top down. Am I getting these top? Yes, I am getting them top down. Um, sock pattern. I have. Sorry, I'm blanking. I have two free sock patterns the trusty toe up and the old reliable top down socks um and they're the go-to patterns that i use all the time really just willy nilly depending on my mood there's no rhyme or reason as to who why are these for the earmarked already for somebody no so this yarn was dyed by sam at scrumptious pearl or sam's mom i think Beautiful. actually dyes it can't remember i think the colorway might be called tahitian treat it's really nice it's really pretty yeah. and then i use some leftover speckled yarn that i had for the heels and toe just because i like to do a coordinating heel and, or a contrasting heel and toe which is kind of fun but no so though i don't have them earmarked for anybody specific i knit them a size i knit them too big for myself because okay. i have small feet i wear a size uh six i used to wear a size five before i had kids <laughs> and um so I knit them in more like a seven, eight, because a lot of my girlfriends have uh, bigger feet than me. And so then I don't need any more socks. And this way 
I can gift them when the time rolls around that somebody needs a pair of socks. I wouldn't gift. take either of your brothers out of the running either. For these? Yeah. Luke wears wild socks. He does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, they would love it. But, um, but then actually, you know what? I, I also have like six people in my life who wear the same size socks as me. Yeah. My mom, my sister, my brother's wife, and probably a few friends as well. But people that I would actually knit socks for, and they're not my cousins. Anyway, so I can knit socks. I just, whatever. Those would probably be on really, the, really the small them. side for Luke. Yes, yes, they would be. <laughs> so what I wanted to mention, though, is that I'm knitting them on my new... Okay, so I should have looked up how you pronounce it. How, do you pr how would you pronounce this brand? Chiaogu? Chiaogu? Chow? Chiaogu? First time I'm seeing the word. So I always, whenever I read it, I thought it was Chiagu. But why would there be a silent O? It's a needle brand. It's, and I said that I was in the market for new knitting needles on Instagram last week and then got like a hundred, like over a hundred comments. 90% of them yeah. were like, Chiaogu. <laughs> Chiaogu, Chiaogu. <laughs> you need to get these knitting needles. They're the best, they're the best, they're the best. And, I, and, and they are. Yeah, as soon as you got them, you were saying them. I couldn't believe them. it. They're so, the knitting <clears throat> experience is just so nice with them. Yeah. It's hard to describe what it is. What is it that you like better in terms of the differences? Okay, so knitting needles are probably super, super personal. Yeah. And I like knitting with metal needles because of the way that I hold. I find wood needles kind of like bend for me. I put too much tension on them. So I prefer metal needles. So that's just, if you like wood needles, then disregard what I'm about to say. I also like five inch tips. They're shorter tips, but the way that I hold, the way that I knit, my hands are further apart. I once bought a set of interchangeable knitting needles that had a shorter tip, and I had to go back and like beg for them to let me return them because normally right. the needles are final sale. Um, because I couldn't, I couldn't knit with them. Like I had the way, it's just not how I hold my needles. And anyhow, so these are the five inch. I got the small. They have a bunch of different sets. I won't go into it too, too, too much. But um, I just got the small set. They go from size 2.75 millimeter, which is a US 2, to size 5 millimeter, which is a US 8. Because these are the size. They also have the larger set, and you can get a complete set. But I, I don't, I already have a set of interchangeable needles. I have the Addy interchangeable set that has all the sizes. And for the amount of time that I use, like the 10 millimeter needle, I don't need two sets. So yeah. I got just the small one. Um, the join, the way that like the, the, yarn goes from the cable to the needle is super super smooth and then the cables themselves are really they stay in their correct shape they're not mm -hmm. like twisting, yeah i know what you mean you know? yeah for sure they're really they're it's and the, the tips are just sharp enough they're not because i have some needles that are so sharp that they're kind of like i constantly poking myself it makes it a little bit unpleasant they're just right i'm so happy that i got this Great. Highly recommend it. And now the reason why I got it is because Chris is about to start his sweater and he needs the same size needle as I need for my sweater. And I knit almost everything with my Addy interchangeable knitting needle set for the past like 10 years. Yeah. That's all I've used. We've run into issues before where yeah. I, you know, I've got to take mine off and hand them back to you. Yeah. because Between the two sets, the Addy interchangeable needles or these Chiagu interchangeable needles, I would definitely recommend these ones. The only thing that I prefer about the Addy is that I like they're just like a twist to get the needle in yeah whereas these ones you have to like spin it and then use a key to lock it into place yeah. which makes for a way better join and is ultimately I think why they're they're a better like one of the reasons why they're better but if you're super lazy and you don't want to have to get out the key and like fiddle with it I haven't. I, can just I like, haven't tried those yet, but the Addies that you have, I love. Maybe it's a hand size fine. thing. Like, no, I, I mean I have liked them for the past ten years. Yeah. I thought that they were, they're totally fine. The smaller sizes, like if you're using really fine yarn or the smaller, they don't come. They're not quite as small. They don't go down to. I think they only go down to three point five millimeter instead of two point seven five. But they, um, and the join just is now smooth because of the way that they go in. So if you were, right. I was trying to knit. I was a project. Um, I cast on for something with those needles in mohair, just a single strand of mohair, and like I wouldn't have made it through it. Mm -hmm. I ended up frogging it, and we'll start again with these needles because they're way uh, more comfortable. Um, I wanted to talk about those. Oh my gosh, I feel like we're already at over half an hour. So very quickly, I'm gonna talk about a couple more new stash acquisitions. So I have my new needles, and then I have in that sort of 
notion sir not yarn compartment i have dun da 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 that just arrived last week. These just arrived last week, <laughs> and I'm so excited. These are from Hohi & Co. As I told you, I met Hohi last year in person for the first time. I'm a big fan of her work. I'm a big fan of her Instagram. And um, as far as I'm concerned, she's a celebrity, and that can go either way when you meet a celebrity in person, and she totally exceeds expectations. She's so nice. She's so smart. She's so warm, kind. I just, I, I'm a huge fan of hers. She's launched a bag company. I'm sure everybody knows. Um, Hohi & Co, the bags. They're made sustainably in Argentina by a local company that she's working with. They're just They're so beautiful. cool. They're, They're beautiful really nice. bags. And I just love what she's doing. Like, I love that um, as a designer with a huge platform and a big following in the knitting industry, there's probably a lot of different directions that she could have gone in if she wanted to diversify or expand. But I think that... I feel like what she's decided to do is just a great um, avenue to explore for her. Absolutely. I really love it. I love it. This and one's so, super, I really like this one. Yeah. So this bag is called Knoll. I love the and lining it's too. In, oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's a beautiful... And it's like, dark gray slate-ish lining in yeah, there. Yeah, kind of like denim. I don't call it like nearly blue. Um, and it has... This is cool. So it has this little thing on the inside, a little clip that you could clip this is the epa pouch in this beautiful sort of like blush pink leather and it's so soft leather suede, suede? is yeah. that what it is suede um so you would connect that to your bag on the inside there's a pocket in here it's really nice and big it's very like cool this you can unbutton this handle but it's just i'm just probably going to leave this beside the couch and like put my project in there you can fit a lot in there for sure like a small sweater project and um the canvas one this is all natural canvas it's washable sturdy looking it's beautiful and i'm going to uh put my put my knitting enamel pins on it nice. to decorate it i should have done that before right now so i got that got the needles two hugely exciting things um and i have then, some band ones you can put on there some want. band some some band ones some heavy metal pins for my knitting yeah. i got this i'm so excited about this this is from gauge it just came yesterday from gauge dye works yeah first i've seen it is so mind you i don't get any anxiety over this it's all work related so <laughs> anxiety over me shopping the amount of things in your stash that i haven't even seen um i don't either it doesn't bother me one bit so these are both called color tests i actually i guess do you think that they're the same i'll ask Catherine. i'm not sure she can weigh in they're um just because the way that they're skeined they're up spun a little it's hard to tell and i think like that the grays the are different this one is is darker and this one's yeah. lighter um but she Catherine, is re uh rejigging her process a little bit and working on new new formulas i think and she's been posting on instagram pictures of some of her color tests that she's doing and they're just these like gorgeous rainbow magical things so and nice. so then she posted i don't know it's like i checked my email on my phone in like the middle of uh like we were just about to sit down to have supper. You don't even know. And uh, there was a, a newsletter from Catherine being like added to the shop. Some of these tests, and I was like, Argh! nice. Stop the car. Yeah. Gotta go. So we met Catherine in Vancouver. Yes. She was amazing. Yes. Yeah. Super. Cool. Yes. She was really. It was the first time I met her. It was the first time I met Alexa from Tin Can Knits. Um, Felicia from Sweet Georgia. And they were. Catherine was in the middle of a friend's birthday celebration and they went to a concert the night before knew it was a band that i liked and brought me a signed poster yeah which was super cool very very sweet yeah i've got that up in the room the room the studio yeah um anyhow so i bought two as soon as i saw them go available online i was like i need to have these i'm gonna start as soon as i'm done those socks and sam's yarn i'm gonna start a pair of socks i mean it, it feel like i shouldn't be knitting socks with it because it's so fantastical but the other thing i wanted to talk about which i thought is really cool because this is something that we're super into this is what it came in nice so it, it's in a ziploc bag which so as people who ship yarn this is something that i think about all the time and we talk about it like i occasionally put up a question sort of on our instagram what do people want what do people think because we're trying to obviously minimize our plastic like make things as reusable or recyclable or we use compostable mailers now but it still sometimes feel like you're using a poly mailer with a plastic bag inside it seems like one extra step too yeah. much of plastic yeah. um so these were in the plastic bag then the plastic bag was in this like gusseted little um 
essentially sturdy paper bag. It's sturdy a paper bag. Mailer, but and then yeah. taped shut with this funky special cardboard tape, which I think is really cool. That's great. Because that's the other thing is like if you're using a cardboard mailer and then just covering it with plastic packing tape, I always wondered about this, like the recyclability of that. Um, so the thing about poly mailers that we use is that they are reusable. Mm -hmm. Not that you could reuse this, you just have to tape it again. Yeah. Or in our case, I will likely give this to the children, they'll color on it and then we'll, oh, and then we'll recycle it. Yeah. But that's great too. Anyone so. who's made an order big enough to go in a box has probably seen uh, Micah's handiwork. Yes, good chance. <laughs> and there's also, this is made from 100% recycled material and it's 100% recyclable. So. Right. Kudos, Catherine. Yeah. I think that's really cool. So where we always run into trouble when I'm trying to source new ideas of how to package and mail our yarn is that we mail some um, large orders, like sweater quantities, right. that I don't know if the practicalities of a gusseted um, cardboard bag, because I tried at one point to mail things in paper bags rather than the plastic Ziploc bag, mm -hmm. and I really, it could only do up to a certain amount of, yeah. like, because you can't get this, like, a giant bag for a certain, you know, so it was sort of, that wasn't, it's always, you know, we're always trying new things, but I think that that's a really cool option, because even if that bag um, got wet, and, but you've got, it's everything's so in a plastic bag on the inside, inside. Yeah, everything would be completely safe. Um, there you go. That's it. I'm really excited about this. I'm excited to be back podcasting. Yeah. So we can't make a promise on when the next one's coming, but we'll no. definitely try. It won't be two years. We hope. <laughs> um, I have one last tiny thing. Go for it. Okay. Because I'm working... Oh, I'm going to fall off my chair. Um, because I'm working on this right now, it's being test knit, and it's going to be ready to release probably. But I bet when we do our next podcast, this pattern will be out. And then I have a little funny joke from when we were at the old Knit City, one. Vancouver. This is my Camaro pattern that I guess I'm calling it Little Camaro because it's it's for kids. The Camaro pattern was released as a pattern just for adults, I believe in 2017. Yeah. And so I've just written it for in children's sizes. And one of the reasons why it took me so long to get around to doing that is because I, I wanted to, um, the proportions had to change a little bit because the adult one has a wider neck and I, I just don't favor a super open neck on a Can't really a baby. deep V a kid. Can't, I don't like you a baby in a deep V. carrots within an hour. And I also, so on the baby one, I put an option for a, um, a buttonhole, button, button closure. And well, then a more well said. <laughs> open, <laughs> with the opening so that it's easy. So you can still have sort of a smaller neck so it's not super wide open, but then you can still get it over their head. Yeah. Which is always She's issue. been wearing that a lot. She wore it, to work with me on Friday. It's so hip. Really, yeah. It's very so cute. cute. I feel like it's it's now kids have it easy somehow. Clothes always look really cool on them the you way look they look good. Are. Yeah. So I knit hers in the same palette as my original Camaro. And the funny story that I have to say about it, except for I knit her hold them up body. Side by side. Hers the body is rose gray and mine the body is um stone. Stone. And so also hers is fits longer on her. This one is cropped on me, which is why the joke here is that this is a size two and this one is mine and they're like kind of not <laughs> substantially different. And what was funny is when we were in Vancouver and we had this Camaro was up on the wall and several people commented like, oh, that's the Camaro. You can do it in child sizes. No, they say, it's available in adult sizes too. That's just like a baby Camaro up there. Or they would say, is that pattern available in adult sizes? Right. And I'd be like, oh yes, it is. Embarrassed because mine is so small. And mine is small. It fits me. This is, I don't know what size I knit. Probably the smallest adult size. Um, and it fits me with like negative ease and it's cropped. So it's, it's small. Yeah. <laughs> and people think I'm a You're child. small, but you're full grown. It's fine. You're not a child. I am a full grown. <laughs> um, so I'm really excited about Camaro too. So I wanted to end. Do you know what I wanted to say about why I wanted to share the Camaro and why I was sharing my design work? Because did you know that I have a word of 2020? Have you have you no, chosen a word? I have not. You want to know what mine is? Yeah. Follow through. Nice. Because you know my original Camaro pattern? I think I knitted in like... I knit my original Camaro sample in... I want to say 2013, 2012 released the pattern in right. 20 I think 17 like I am not good at following through I'm fine with it it's a timeless design though look that's not 
well, thank waiting you. for any kind of deadline you can wear that 20 years from now no but it's just that like i i start something i'll even finish it and then put it aside and then not not follow not see it through to publication and so my atari sweater pattern i decide like i started it i wrote it out i sent it to the tech editor i i like really am trying to stay on top of that stay one. things yeah. like yeah see things through and that also applies to personal stuff like house stuff like just in our house i'll often rather than seeing things through to the end pick up all the kids clothes and then put them on the stairs Right. Instead of just follow through, Janice, go upstairs, put them in the drawer, see it to the end. I admire your ambition. I think my 2020 word will probably still be survive. Uh, um, <laughs> just yeah. be, keep up with the kids. I'm not afraid. If, if it's follow through, then I got to get things off needles faster. So Well, it's not only knitting related. It's right. just like a, I'm just trying to sort of do it. Seize the day. Yeah. So we talked about doing um, a little question or something at the end. Did you I up, did not. Did you come up with a question? No, I was out in the studio. I'll be back out there in ten minutes, and I'm not sure. I don't have a question of the day. Um, let's save it then. All right. And how about that? No, how about this? What are you looking forward to about um, 2020 knitting? I'm looking forward to the show. Mm -hmm. That's like our, our next marker coming up. Uh, I've not picked a summer knitting project, but I do find because it's I gotta, February. I gotta. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the next thing I knit after the Atari will be summer. Okay. <laughs> Let's be realistic. Yeah. Um, I do love summer knitting, though. I got a summer a sweater down last summer. Yes. In time for, uh, I had to start it in late June to make sure I would have it ready for the show in Vancouver, you're also, which I did. You're a, he's 6'3", you have long arms. Like, knitting it's a sweater a lot of sweater, yeah. is a big deal. Yeah, yeah. I knit children's size stuff, so that I <laughs> like. Right, the ones for the kids this fly off the needles. This is like a weekend needles. project because it's so exciting to knit stripes. Um, so you're looking forward to the show and your summer knitting. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. So, Which could run well into the winter. Yeah. That's fine. That's great. Um, so that's it. Thanks nice to be back, guys. Podcasting with me, Cliffy. Love it. And I'm going to head back out to the studio, finish the day's dying. All right. See you next time. Bye, guys.